resurrecting its NBA Jam series of arcade-style basketball games. And for once, there's a reason to look forward to a new version of an old sporting franchise. This time round, you can engage in three-on-three -three takedown, and the star player's special moves have all been perfectly motion captured to add more than 700 animated actions to the game. You also get the chance to step back in time to compete against some of the best players from a 40-year period, with new locations depending on when you decide to play. NBA Jam 2004 could be worth slam dunking into your PS2 tray when it finally arrives later this year. The Breath of Fire series has never been known for its originality, so imagine our surprise when we discovered that Dragon Quarter could well be one of the most unique RPG experiences on PS2. Unlike previous Breath of Fire outings, there are no random battles this time. In their place, you'll find dungeons swarming with a variety of enemies that you can either avoid or confront as you choose. Players also have the ability to set a variety of traps, and with plenty of items and weapons to pick up, you'll find yourself doing some serious menu management, as each character can hold only a limited number of items. RPG stalwarts may find the new game a little too different for their liking, but if you're looking for a challenge with a great battle system, then you should seriously look into this one. Sega's classic 80s coin-op, Altered Beast is finally reanimated for the PS2 masses and tasks you with the role of a special military operative who is able to transform into a number of beastly forms. Further details are still sketchy at the moment, but Sega have dropped the original tale, deciding to go all out on Res Evil-style genetic research and military cover-ups gone wrong. Expect this one early next year. Sporting a sleek, skin-tight outfit and performing a familiar repertoire of Sam Fisher-esque moves, Ethan Hunt can surely do no wrong, as Mission Impossible returns with Operation Surma. In fact, Ethan's Sam Fisher impression is so good, they could almost be long-lost brothers. Ethan must shimmy along pipes, tiptoe around, crouch in the shadows and knock out guards as you attempt to infiltrate the shady Surma conglomerate, which is believed to be conducting dangerous weapons research and developing a computer virus known as Ice Worm.
but Operation Surma promises to be more than just a lazy splinter cell clone. We'll have a great deal more on this in the coming months. Placing you in a world of giant robot fighting fun, Zone of the Enders The Second Runner is everything the fatally flawed original should have been, and then some. you enter a giant flying robot and take on the hordes of smaller robots that ambush you, carrying out the odd fetch and carry task, and then finally confront the fearsome end of level boss. groundbreaking stuff, but it's executed so well you can't help but be impressed. And hacking your way through a swarm of 50 plus robot drones is pretty exhilarating to say the least. the original game's simplistic and unresponsive control system has been improved. Close combat moves can now be tailored into combos that knock the opponent in various directions, long-range gunfire can be charged up to produce clouds of vicious homing lasers, and there's a massive range of sub-weapons on tap, ranging from a grab attack that lets you pick up bits of the destructible scenery for use as weapons to a handy little teleport device. And it all feels perfectly natural thanks to a camera so brilliantly designed that you never lose track of what's going on. And that's an amazing feat considering the mind-boggling amount of action that takes place on screen. If you're 
still not convinced, then consider that the European version comes loaded with some significant extra features over the American and Japanese versions, new levels, remixed missions and two new levels of difficulty. promised much but delivered little. The second runner is a sequel that improves upon every aspect. The over-generous helping of cutscenes can be a bit much at times, and it could become repetitive after a while. But play this and you'll experience some of the fastest, most astonishingly fluid action ever. is a true second generation extreme sports title and one that appears to have learned from the past mistakes of bygone trick-based console games. There's no time limit on the stunt challenge stages for starters. You can take a nice relaxed approach to finding new dares, some of which are time-based though, but if you fail you can always start again. There's also a ton of extras to pursue, from unlocking new bikes to upgrading your stunts, and the double or nothing system encourages you to make dares for extra cash. It's a good system overall, and one that balances risk with reward perfectly. the stunts or the bikes are nothing out of the ordinary, you'll certainly be impressed with the sheer scale of the scenery as rolling fields and cityscapes scroll out before you. It's even possible to bike from one end of the game to the other with no loading screens, providing you've unlocked all the areas of course. Multiplayer gaming is catered for in party mode and Metal X dispenses with all that split screen nonsense in favour of quietly taking turns to get the highest score, but it's just a bit too basic for our liking. The graphics, while mostly of a high quality, sometimes look slightly unfinished, but at least the frame rate's smooth and never slips. There's a commendable amount of cars and people around too, and Metal X is undeniably a fun and well-polished game. Of course, the upcoming Tony Hawk's Underground promises to do all this and much more, but you'll get a load of fun out of this one in the meantime.
Norway Desert Storm 2 is a time trip into military combat, where SAS and Delta Force troops combine and take offensive action against Iraq. Desert Storm 2 is based on survival as much as assault, and rather than standing around like clueless cannon fodder, each soldier in your four-man team will need to be positioned strategically, with the knowledge that as soon as enemies are alerted, they will spread out and attack with stealthy precision. Flicking between each soldier allows you to go on solo attack runs, and there's fun to be had positioning your sniper in a high vantage point to provide covering fire for your ground-based heavier weapons. As well as using rocket launchers and traditional AK-47s to hand out justice, quieter stealth kills are rewarded with extra points and a well worth extra effort. After the desert has been conquered, further missions will lead you into a crowded bunker complex, for instance, where tough decisions have to be made as you provide covering fire for an air-based evacuation. Should you storm the advancing forces on foot, hold back with anti-tank rockets, or call in the airstrikes, presuming the soldier who can order an airstrike is still in the land of the living, of course. Roger that, Alpha. Desert Storm 2 is scarily realistic, and if war disturbs you, then it's probably best to stick with something less traumatic. But for the rest of us trigger-happy heroes, Conflict Desert Storm 2 has enough strategy and realism to make it worth a look. Network adapter is still waiting for that must-have killer release, but are we finally getting the game we're after in the hardware online arena? Take a big empty arena, fill it with heavily armed vehicles, and then let them drive about in an attempt to blow everything up. And that's about it really, as hardware doesn't have anything more to offer. But at least it does what it does well, and far more convincingly, may we add, than the almost identical Twisted Metal Black Online, with its dated graphics and dodgy online connection. Everything about Hardware Online Arena has been designed to ensure the maximum amount of player contact as possible, which makes it a serious online contender as you can plug in and start having fun straight away. Hardware's real problem, though, is its lack of content. The five maps on offer surely don't represent value for money. And the selection of vehicles is even more disappointing. What's more, the lineup of game modes is equally depressing, with Deathmatch and King of the Hill and poorly executed team versions of both. Sony has promised that new maps, vehicles, weapons and game modes will become available in the future as separate downloads, but that's no excuse for such a flimsy initial offering. Ultimately, this lack of options makes it hard to fully recommend hardware, but if you're already hooked up and desperate for something half-decent to play, hardware is definitely worth a look.
tale of souls and swords eternally retold. The Dreamcast fighting extravaganza Soul Calibur was generally considered to be one of the best fighting games of its time. With a swathe of innovative ideas and a varied cast of characters, each with their own distinctive style. Now these qualities are ten a penny, and the sequel is coming out on all three major consoles. So with such a noble heritage, Soul Calibur 2 certainly has a lot to live up to. There is a lot that will be familiar to fans of the original game, so this sequel may not be quite as revolutionary as its predecessor, but it still brings its fair share of progress. The new innovations include an expanded arena design, with varied shapes and partial enclosures around some stages. These walls can be used to stun opponents and as a means to outmaneuver the opposition. The guard impact move has been simplified to two directions rather than the original four, and there's been significant expansion in the guard break attacks. While they still employ the familiar Soul Charge system, there are now three levels of charging, with only the highest level providing unblockable attacks while the other two only produce counter hits. The story is the familiar search for the sword, Soul Edge. Destroyed at the end of the previous game, fragments of the blade have appeared throughout the world, causing the majority of the cast to pick up arms once again and rejoin the fray with all their varied motives. While Hwang and Sophia both leave the stage of history due to their conclusive story arcs, there are four new characters joining the crew. Hong Yung Sung and Cassandra Alexandra neatly replace the two absentees, while the roguish nobleman Raphael Sorel and the last priestess of the wind, Talim, each bring a new style to the mix. Hayachi from Tekken is in here too, and so is Necrid, the Todd McFarlane made character who really makes us shiver. Whether you're a veteran player who can pull off every move, or a complete novice who really can't be asked to learn hundreds of new attacks, Soul Calibur 2 will provide instant satisfaction that you won't find elsewhere in the likes of Virtua Fighter or Tekken 4. The visuals are unrivaled, and with ludicrous amounts of extras to unlock, this is guaranteed to keep you coming back for more. The world's greatest rally game steps up a gear with its fourth incarnation, and Codemasters is going full power to deliver something very special on PS2 this time around. Major revisions have taken place in and around the championship area of Colin McRae 4, where this time you get to drive for any team that takes your fancy, unlike the strict focus on Ford in McRae 3. This open championship approach should please those of you who quickly grew tired of the restricted structure of the last game, and along with some new parts testing challenges, there's a lot more emphasis on the fun factor this time. You can now create custom rallies pieced together from your favorite individual stages, and a number of classic stages from previous games have also been resurrected. The technical aspect of setting your car up has now been slightly simplified. The menu systems are now cleaner for starters and much more efficient, allowing you to tweak all the essential components from a single screen, making it easier to use while retaining the depth of the previous games. Street 200. Why bother with four if you already own three? The difference is immediate. There's a new engine in place to allow for greater draw distances, and the sheer volume of trackside detailing is overwhelming. It's looking dense, lush, animated, and so much more alive. 
The routes now feel like they cut through the real world, like entire sections of countryside rather than five-mile lengths of linear track tightly cordoned off by invisible barriers on either side. Colin 3 already feels like a nostalgia trip, and you understand in an instant just how far this series has come. Colin McRae 4 is the definitive next-generation rally title. Amplitude is Sony's latest music-making rhythm action game and sequel to last year's largely ignored Frequency. The crux of the gameplay is about as simple as it could possibly get. A string of notes fly across the screen and you press one of three buttons to trigger the sound. Different parts of the song begin to play as you complete each bar, and if you can get them all playing at once, you're basically playing the whole tune piece by piece. Not a great deal has changed from the earlier game though. In Frequency, you could design your own logo from an easy to use selection of shapes and colours. Amplitude does away with all this in favour of a customised dancing character who jigs along to the beat. But where Amplitude comes into its own is in the multiplayer department. Abandoning frequencies squint or you'll miss it split screen mode, the fun 2 to 4 player game sees you all competing on the same screen for a perfect score. Best of all, Amplitude lets you play online with people from all over the world, coming together in musical harmony. The best thing about Amplitude is that it keeps you coming back for more. It really is a game worth playing, thanks to intense visuals, a top selection of tunes and great online play. If you're on the lookout for something truly different, addictive and endlessly entertaining, you should really look this up. Friendly match, England versus Germany. Pro Evolution Soccer was quite simply the best game ever, and better still in two-player. And now, the sequel we've all spent the last 18 months fantasizing about is finally ready, and you'll be happy to know Pro Evolution Soccer 3 is as close to perfection as you'll ever get. Germany have opted for a conventional 4-4-2 formation. From the outset, the improvements are obvious. The game's menu screens have been simplified to cater for the wealth of new modes on offer. The player animations have been completely reworked, even going so far as to individually recreate the signature moves of key players.
Further depth has been added through your team's facial expressions, which now change to reflect the flow of the game. In addition to the series' renowned cup tournaments, friendly matches and a new four-division Master League, Pro Evolution 3 now sports a shop element to the game, where players who accumulate points by the training and exhibition modes can trade them for new stadiums, crowd effects, teams, players and much, much more. The Master League has been given a polish. As always, you'll begin in the lower reaches of the Football League. This time around, you'll have to make do without the support of the crowd to begin with, as punters will only pay to watch your side once you start stringing the results together. Pro Evolution 3 will also allow you to download new players, kits and formations, and even though there's no online play proper, this could well turn out to be the best thing ever. Watch out for our scorching review soon. Trust us, your life will not be complete until then. Off-Road Fury was the perfect antidote to all the stale driving games on PS2. The controls were fantastic, the crashes were hilarious, but most importantly the multiplayer worked extremely well, with insanely addictive four-player battles. And now the world's best quad bike game has given birth to a sequel. 
take control of over 20 new ATVs, over 40 extremely bumpy and well-mapped courses, and marvel at how satisfying the whole experience is once you've mastered the tracks and perfected those essential momentum-sustaining landings. The championship mode itself is made up from amateur and professional leagues. Things include nationals, supercross, enduro and freestyle, and you'll need the required points scored to advance further in each. Supercross circuits are still the most technically challenging, with seemingly hundreds of speed bumps per lap, and it's here that you discover there's more to winning races than going flat out. Crucial that you can forget about slowing down for a bend as the overpowered AI has a habit of producing rival ATVs from nowhere, especially on the final lap of the final bend, where many a race is lost through no fault of your own. And just how annoying is that? The original ATV was the only game to tear us away from the four-player time splitters, which is a considerable achievement. And now ATV2 improves on the magic formula once more, offering loads more tracks and other high-flying mini-games. Unfortunately, the bad fogging effect that played the original makes a return, but it hardly spoils the fun if you regularly plug into a multi-tap. Overall, ATV2 
Off-Road Fury is a worthy sequel that delivers more fantastic single and multiplayer races, topped with amusingly cheesy stunts and finished off with great rider sounds and hilarious grunts and groans. entertaining off-road racer that will keep you busy for weeks. Best play with mates though. lovingly crafted GT4 special feature, we review more exclusive action from the biggest, fastest and most beautiful looking racing game of all time. Prepare! The cars truly are exemplary, sound effects are second to none and there's also an all new game mode that gives you the chance to manage your own racing team. This really is the biggest leap forward the series has ever taken. And if you're still not convinced, then consider the online aspect, which developer Polyphony are keen to assure us will complement the single-player game and not infringe upon the fun. Much is still set to change between now and GT4's eventual release, but stay with us and we'll soon reveal all. In the meantime, enjoy this exclusive peek.
Somebody stop those tornado goons! Best described as redneck racing on a hillbilly highway, the king of Route 66 is a ridiculous arcade racer that bends the truth to make the occupation of a truck driver seem far more exciting than it actually is in real life. You compete against rivals in a bid to drive all the way from Chicago to California on the most famous stretch of road in the world. Each level asks you to travel from point to point with a different aim for each mission. missions might be a straight race to the finish against a rival, while others might require you to destroy a fellow trucker from a rival trucker gang. And along the hectic road trip, you gain rewards that can be exchanged for speed enhancing parts. Part of the challenge to become the king of Route 66 also includes picking up busty young broads. You can pick up one from each state, but it's not made clear what happens to a previous girl once you pick up a new one. Although the plot bits where you talk to rival truckers are completely bonkers, crashing through cars, trees and shunting other road users into oblivion is highly enjoyable. The king of Route 66 won't appeal to everyone, but fingers crossed there will be fewer plot scenes in the final game. It would be easy to dismiss true crime streets of LA as just another moderately entertaining GTA ripoff. But as our exclusive footage shows, this LA-based crime paper is looking very favorable as a worthy replacement. The hand-to-hand -hand combat is based around bone crunching martial arts moves, and you can even juggle opponents in the air before pummeling them into submission. The gunplay is John Woo inspired, and even the car chase scenes have their own dedicated set of moves, meaning you can hop onto two wheels to avoid enemy fire, or perform U-turns to evade stray bullets. Movie buffs will immediately recognize the menacing voiceover tones of Hollywood hard nut Gary Oldman, among others. Recently signed by Activision to provide True Crime's lineup of social deviants with suitably intimidating voices. You'll be able to hear them for yourself this September.
based on one of the most infuriatingly difficult games of all time, Pitfall Harry is an adventure through jungles, mountains, and caverns, all in the search of mythical treasure. It's a similar style romp to the recently reviewed Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb, even down to the canteen, which Harry must use to regain health. But there's also a pungent whiff of Crash Bandicoot in the air, and Harry himself is not exactly your standard hero, with his goggly eyes, knobbly knees, and wild flailing arms. Still, it doesn't stop him from using all manner of clever items. There's an ice pick for starters, essential for climbing glaciers. And you get a slingshot with unlimited ammo, ideal for fending off the wildlife. A shield and torch will help keep you safe too. And there's even a pogo stick, which Harry can use for gaining extra height. Levels range from straight ahead running to vertical climbing, and there's plenty of puzzle solving just in case you get bored. Although everything looks a bit on the cheap side of things, things move round the screen in a realistic way, and there's actually some complex physics behind all this running about. Before you write this one off as another sacrilege on a defenseless classic video game, consider that Pitfall Harry has been designed to appeal to the younger gaming audience. And besides, it's nice to have a fun, silly-looking game every once in a while. Welcome, John Watson here. It could be interesting today. With me is Ali McCoyst. Over to you, Ali. Well, it's a capacity crowd here today for this big one, and you can feel the tension and the excitement in the air. Hello, and welcome to FIFA Football 2004. Over the next few minutes, we're going to be giving you a glimpse into why 2004 will be the most authentic football game ever released. How is this? Well, let's start with where we've come from. The focus of last year's FIFA Football 2003 was to perfect the fundamentals of good football for the individual players. With 2004, we've built on this solid foundation, developing it further by concentrating on the essential elements and continuing their evolution. We started with the way the players move and react to the ball. Using a new organic animation engine, we've been able to give the players a realistic and lifelike feel to their movement and responsiveness. The ball itself has been reworked with an all new model, giving it genuine physics and handling characteristics. Football is of course a team sport, and by using new formation technology, we're able to model the behavior of 11 individuals playing as one team. Moreover, this allows us to carefully architect the interaction of two teams on the pitch. Key to this effort is positional awareness, as well as two, three, and four man subunits who work together to manage space and create opportunities. This has been partnered with a player team database producing players with positional wisdom, personality modeling and a host of other new attributes that add up to the world's best player simulation. All of these elements combine to give FIFA Football 2004 unique individual players moving and behaving realistically while collectively working as a team. 99% of football is played off the ball, so this foundation of authentic football is extended by a brand new system called Off the Ball Control featuring physical play and jostling that allows players to fight for open space and positional advantage. A new defender marking control allows you to contain the player with the ball while simultaneously calling a second defender to put the pressure on the ball carrier. Remote receiver control provides a unique way of selecting and controlling potential receivers of a pass. 
The mode is initiated with a press of the R2 button. Three possible receivers are highlighted with triangle, circle and square icons, each of which represents a corresponding button on the controller. By pressing and holding one of the buttons, in this case the square, you have selected a player to receive the ball. Whilst under your control, the left analogue stick may be used to move that player into an open position and simply release the button to initiate the pass. When releasing the ball, the shift buttons may be used to modify the pass. In this example, the L2 button has been used to deliver a ball forward of the receiver and into space. Remote receiver control is also applied to dead ball situations, such as a corner kick. As before, icons are shown over the potential receivers and once one is chosen, in this case the triangle, the right analogue stick can be utilised to jostle for position, thereby creating space for that scoring opportunity. So there you have it, the evolution and development of good, solid football fundamentals through organic animation, improved ball physics, advanced positional logic and in-depth attribute modelling, combined with the innovation of off-the-ball control making FIFA Football 2004 the most authentic and exciting football simulation in the world. Vivendi is back with an arcade cheater which aims to be as photorealistic as possible with background graphics, particularly on the indoor environments. The 2020s aren't a particularly great time in the future. Global Strike Team, a worldwide response force, has to be created in order to solve threats to law and order in an out-of-control world. You'll need to master the different abilities of three squad members over 21 single-player missions. Kim Trans the sniper, Tony Jackson the hacker and all-round communications specialist and Matthias King Cates the commander and grenade specialist, also using CS gas and flashbang grenades. Experience points allows you to periodically upgrade your weaponry. You can also use the microphone to issue voice recognized commands to your squad, although as normal this will have to be trained with your voice to be totally effective. There will of course be some stealth to accompany this action. It won't always be the best idea to go in with all guns blazing. SWAT certainly scores on the content stakes and hopefully will deliver on its promise of being a compelling futuristic arcade thriller. We'll bring you the full review at the end of October. Work team. The World War II juggernaut rolls ever on. Due to some fundamental changes in combat style, Rising Sun will play a lot slower than its predecessor Frontline, often forcing you to sneak through entire sections without firing a single shot.
Once you wake, hold on a second. You know my girl Betty? Yeah, she sent me a picture yesterday. Let me tell you something. Here you would think got nothing on her. I thought Betty was a blonde. No, that's Mary Lou. I tell you what, I'll put him on a truck. <laughs> must extinguish fire to aid your escape from the bowels of the burning ship in scenes from the bombing of Pearl Harbor, Rising Sun's answer to the Omaha beach landing in Medal of Honor front line. Rising Sun also presents a number of gaming dilemmas. Firstly, as you step over the helpless bodies of your dying comrades, do you stop and help them? Or do you leave them to die horribly in the hands of the barbaric enemy? Come on, let's go! Dragging people to safety often means you'll have another set of hands and feet to help you out in the next gunfight, so you'll have to think fast. conventional weapons, there's also the chance to see some heavy-duty artillery and blast away at those pesky incoming planes. Unfortunately, there's no online play penciled in, but nevertheless, Rising Sun looks set to be the best World War II shooter ever made.
Now, get in that turret now! Marines, do you read me? I need a damage report! Spinelli here! Radios are up! Gunny, the engines will be up in a second! Got it! All right, let's see what this sweetheart can do. Neversoft is taking its globally huge Tony Hawk series in a whole new direction. Starting out as an underprivileged go-getter, the fledgling Tonester must strive to become a full-time pro skater by completing a roster of new challenges and participating in various trick-based competitions. Yo, my method for my musical madness, move and motivate those with musical talents, huh? To reflect this change in focus, Tony Hawk's Underground is bursting with new features, including the ability to hop off your board at any time and to take to the street on foot, accessing areas of the level you won't be able to reach on wheels. The game environments feature a full day-night cycle with some challenges that can only be completed under the veil of darkness. And as well as being able to import your own likeness into the game, you'll also have much more scope in terms of clothing and accessories. Respect and never soft for daring to be different. We'll have the review copy soon enough. Ready to rock, rock, don't stop, pops, I knock like the lumberjack chop chop. The worst man for right fly, let us a curse, a curse for circus, service, surface. And watch how the brother get over the fly, casting over with the frankincense odor. The right move be first to see first. She was the king, and she got to get cursed. She ain't heard the worst of me. Up to your chest, three days, but then I'm gonna burn your body like a STD. Yeah. Put a 20 on the next brother, step in the lead wrong. I'm messing around and making you a G, my theme song. This might seem wrong, but this is a mean song. Crushed like King Kong, and just like ping pong. Back and forth, I pulled my arm and toss. It's time to force my verbal affirmation is to always go off. When syllables slide, you'll be enjoying the vibe. With considerate pride and J vibes. This is it, the final game based on the last film in J.R.R. Tolkien's classic fantasy trilogy. The two towers reached stellar sales and won major praise, so now EA hopes to match the heightened expectations of something even better. Six of the Chief Fellowship characters will be voiced by the original actors and be playable in the game. And two hidden ones will be waiting to be unlocked.
closely to the plot, there'll be multiple destinations and tasks to carry out as Frodo and Sam carry on to destroy the ring, and White Wizard Gandalf defends Minas Tirith. To extend the combat range, characters can swing on ropes, fire catapults and kick boulders. With eight playable characters, there's certainly room for more than one of you. So that's where the co-op mode comes in, allowing another player to join you on the quest. Just to show this game is getting the Star Wars level of movie reverence, the whole game will be wrapped up in trilogy composer Howard Shaw's music. Like the programming team for the Matrix-based game, EA's developers will have full access to set data and other movie material, which contribute to the improvement in graphics you're watching right now. Tolkien's fan base is old enough and vocal enough for EA to take on all the feedback about the two towers. With any luck, not only the graphics will have improved, the working title of Kanonchi, Sega Shinobi spin-off sees players assuming the role of a mysterious female ninja who must battle demonic foes and collect the scattered pieces of a legendary weapon to help save Tokyo from the onset of a villainous demon realm. More info should filter through over the coming months. Smackdown returns to PS2 with an all-new collection of WWE showmanship and lycra-laden danger. Over the coming months, we'll expose new wrestlers, new moves, and most importantly of all, we'll be dishing the dirt on Smackdown's collection of bras and panties. It's the most comprehensive reworking of the WWE series yet seen, and the second biggest enhancement behind the addition of revealing underwear action is the way each wrestler now fights in accordance with their WWE size and standing. Yes, each wrestler now feels different. In previous Smackdowns, it really didn't matter who you played as each character shared most of the same moves. But with Here Comes the Pain, each wrestler is different, properly different, and it won't be just the special moves that set your wrestlers apart.
Mine. Don't make any sudden moves. Hop inside my mouth if you want to live. Somewhere beyond the sea, somewhere waiting for me. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, wait to cross. <laughs> 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. How's it going, Bob? That's a big place to find one fish. Has anybody seen my son? Your son, Chico? No, it's Nemo. We're looking for Nemo. <laughs> uh, the name's Crush. I gotta find my son, Nemo. Grab shell, dude. Grab whoa! To find Nemo. Let's ask for directions. No! What is it with men and asking for directions? We'll take a miracle. <laughs> yeah, I saw him, but I'm not telling you where he went. <laughs> Alright, I'll talk! I'll talk! Getting him back is a whole other story. <laughs> Walt Disney Pictures presents a Pixar Animation Studios film. We're gonna help him escape. Nemo! Don't give up! 
Your dad's been fighting the entire ocean looking for you. I'm coming, Nemo! I never knew my father! Come on, good hug. On May 30th. Oh, my stomach. No hurling on the shell, dude, okay? Just waxed it. You've got to see it. Church! To believe it. <laughs> Nice. Finding Nemo. Everybody hold on! Walt Disney Pictures presents a Pixar Animation Studios film. Name's Crush. I'm the sea turtle from Finding Nemo. And dudes, I'm gonna introduce you to all the fishy folk in this awesome movie. Check it out! First, there's our righteous hero in the making. Hello, my name is Marlon. Marlon is a loving, caring, semi-overprotective father. Hold on, hold on, wait to cross. Who kind of edges on being a little neurotic. Are you sure you want to go to school this year? Because there's no problem if you don't. You can wait five or six years. Come on, Dad. Nemo. Whoa. He's craving adventure. Dad, Dad, can I go play too? Can I? What I like is sort of the charming innocence of going out in the world for the first time and everything's fascinating and everything makes your jaw drop and your eyes go wide. They're going to the drop-off? What, what are you, what, what are you, insane? Nemo knows he can do all this stuff, but his dad doesn't want him to. No, Dad, just because he's you're scared of the ocean doesn't mean I am. Ah! Nemo! And Nemo gets like totally separado from his dad. Daddy! And while Marlin sets off to find Nemo, Nemo he runs into a most excellent blue buddy named Dory. Oh, you really caught me there. Dory is the sweet, kind-hearted fish. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. That just happens to have one little problem. I suffer from short-term memory loss. It runs in my family. Well. I mean, at least I think it does. These two little fish start looking for Nemo. Suddenly it's like, uh-oh, Chongo. Ah! Hello. Of all beasts you see, sharks, I think, are probably the most feared. That's good. They're big, they're intimidating, lots of teeth. OK, that's just scary. I'm having fish tonight. Whoa, totally rocking part of Marlin and Dory's trip. Speaking you know who. Oh, intro. Jelly Man, offspring. Offspring, Jelly Man. Jelly? Sweet. Totally. I like Super Talk. You know, you're really cute, but I don't know what you're saying. Why wouldn't the turtle be a surfer, dude? They've seen surfers a lot of times. Rogers! Oh. Rogers! Meantime, little Bud Nemo has met some friends of his own in what is referred to as an aquarium. The tank that, that Nemo ends up in. Shark bait! It's like a one flew over the cuckoo's nest assortment of characters. I think you're nuts! And you would be too if you were stuck in the glass box. Fish aren't meant to be in a box, kid. It does things to you. Life's out there, in the ocean. Gil is this tough, scarred, Moorish idol, very proud looking fish inside this tank. Gil commands respect just out of sheer weight and bravado. Perfect. Bloat is a sort of hot-tempered blowfish. Only the worthy may join our sacred order in the fraternal bonds of tankhood. And the moment he starts losing his temper, Grab me! There I go! How many fish could inflate, deflate, uh, and spike? Can't hear you, Peach! I said we got a live one! Peach is a starfish. She lives stuck to the side of the aquarium. Hey, look! Scum Angel! And it's a doozy! Very sarcastic, very dry. Nice. And that's hard to do in, in an aquarium. Because I love the bubbles. Bubbles is just plain nuts. Bubbles. My bubbles. Where there's fish, there's gotta be foul fish. Mine. Ha ha! Brilliant! Birds totally rock! Here's a strange relationship. Nigel, who's his pelican, <laughs> is really good friends with the tank gang. Pelicans and fish only ever really go together as a meal. Sorry if I ever took a snap at you. Fish gotta swim, birds gotta eat. These are just a few of the totally awesome characters you'll meet in Finding Nemo. It's probably the cutest characters we've ever produced at Pixar. Coo coo ka Ah, is the party over? See ya later, Bye!
Thank you, dude crush! Walt Disney Pictures presents a Pixar Animation Studios film. Oh boy, this is going to be good, I can tell. We're going to learn how they make the water look like water. Here we go, we're ready to learn to get some knowledge. You take a fish model and you stick it in a blue background. It's not going to look like it's underwater. It's going to look like it's floating in air. Boy, well, I bet that's frustrating. So one of the biggest problems we had to solve right off the bat was how do we make that look like it's underwater? Excuse me, is there anything I can do? I am a scientist, sir. We did a lot of research early on to try to find the, the different elements that, when paired correctly, would complete the illusion of being underwater. We have some genuine scientists here with PhDs and all kinds of degrees, and they take these things on very analytically and break it down. It came down to a list of about five things. Rules, okay. rules, rules. The first element is particulate matter. Which is the, the schmutz that's in the ocean. No matter how clear the water is, there's always stuff floating in there. And that gives the water depth. Wait, wait, wait. I have definitely seen this floating speck before. And in a lot of shots, um, we actually figured out a way so that if a fish swam quickly or did a quick little adjust, the particulate responds and gets kind of kicked out of the way. Wow, dusty. That particulate matter you put into the shot is sitting there. It looks like a star field playing some Star Wars scene. That's got to move. Okay, so that serves as well. Everything's moving constantly. The water's shifting, and there are waves and underwater currents. And those currents affect not only the particulate, but any soft things like seagrass. So you get this amazing, rich feeling of everything being alive and moving slightly. Right then, who's next? And the next element is caustic lighting which is this ripply lighting that you see in a pool on the water, on the bottom of a pool that shows shimmery light. That wonderful magical dance that it does. You've got light coming down from the surface, but the light isn't coming through a crystal clear surface. It's coming through this surface which is always moving. And the light shafts come down as beams that move and dance around the surface. It's so pretty. The next thing you need to create is murk, which is this sort of foggy underwater look. Water tends to make things decay so they look fuzzier more quickly. Not only do they fall off into this kind of murk where the detail becomes more indistinct, but they actually lose color. You tend to lose your red tones and warm tones first and, you know, over distance all that's left is blue. Wow, the big blue. What's it like? Um, big and blue? I knew it. And the last thing you need to create it all is reflection and refraction. Now in the ocean, it's how the light reflects and refracts on the surface and right below the surface. In the fish tank, reflection and refraction are much more complex because of the four walls of the tank. If you're in a fish tank and you're looking out, you're going to see a mere reflection. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Don't listen to anything my sister says. She's nuts! <laughs> when you fill four glass walls with water, as the light enters that, it bends. An object that's really here in space might look like it's way over here. Real cool stuff happens when you're either outside looking at the corner of a tank, because then you can see Nemo twice, once at each side, because light will bend both directions. By paying attention to that detail and getting it just right, we've made a fish tank that looks absolutely real. With all those elements together, you actually start to believe that you are in water. You are in substance between camera and character instead of a sort of painted, airy set. The ocean looks like an ocean. It doesn't look like a cartoon ocean, like a painting of an ocean. It looks like the ocean. It was beautiful. It looked like real water. It was buoyant and, and full of life. It all changes and ripples across, you know, and you just go, wow, that is just gorgeous. It's awesome. It was a bit of a brain tease, but we, we figured it out. All righty, Mr. Smarty Pants. You're an inspiration to all of us. I'm in. You and your family will be cursed for always and eternity. <laughs> This spring, Walt Disney Pictures brings the award-winning book to life. Holes. My name is Stanley Yelnats. All my life, I seem to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
My grandpa says it's because of this 150-year-old curse. There's no curse on this family. There is on the men in this family. It's all because of your no-good, dirty, rotten, pig-stealing great-great-grandfather. <laughs> Welcome to Camp Green Lake. Where's the lake? <laughs> this is Stanley. Everyone in my family names their son Stanley because it's... Yell that's backwards. Well, that's interesting. Did you tell him about the lizards? You don't bother them, they won't bother you. <laughs> Usually. Now, to break his family's curse... It's destiny. He'll have to solve a mystery. What do you say we dig one more hole? Why? I feel lucky. And find what's hidden at Camp Green Lake. What is that? I think I might have found something. What'd you find? You better get down here. Well, the sun is shining, but it don't feel good. Don't smile down on this neighborhood. Oh! I go walking through the stinking town. Mr. I keep my eyes down. Ah! April 18. And the deets and we we'll stick together. Stanley! My name is X-Ray. <laughs> Magnet. <laughs> Zigzag. Mm -hmm. This is Zero. Stop it. Oh, 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 you stink! classic books of all time. Everybody dreams of finding a great book to make a movie out of. And I think that I was lucky enough to find it. My name is Stanley Yelnats. Everyone in my family names their son Stanley because it's Yelnats backwards. All my life, I seem to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> my grandpa, Stanley Yelnats II, says it's all because of this 150-year-old curse. It was all because of your no good, dirty, rotten, big stealer, great, great grandpa. <laughs> There's no curse on this family. There is on the men in this family. It's basically about this kid's journey through his family curse. Everything's just happening to him at once. Welcome to Camp Green Lake. Where's the lake? Oh! <laughs> Camp Green Lake is a dangerous place. Did you tell him about the lizards? They're venomous and they'll bite you and you die. You don't bother them, they won't bother you. Usually. The lizards. I love the lizards. I had about, I say, four on me in one of the scenes. If one's on top of you, you cannot move. But you have to deal with three or four adults who are pretty quirky. My name is Mr. Sir. You are to dig one hole each day. Five foot deep, five foot in diameter. When the fella comes to camp, he thinks he's the world's toughest man, which is me. And then he just has met the really toughest person in the world, which is the warden. That's the number one rule at Camp Green Lake. Do not upset the warden. Her reputation is fierce. Maybe we should just shoot him. These are three people who are looking for treasure for their own wealth. And in fact, they've got all these young kids working for them doing this all day. Did you say we dig one more hole? What is that? What'd you find? It's a wonderful puzzle piece, this movie. There are great pieces where you go, what does this have to do with that? And then as the movie evolves, you find out, ah, now I get it. And it's also an adventure story, a good adventure story. I think I might have found something. It's a great joy to bring this story to life and to, to finally be in my daughter's favorite book. <laughs> Says I'm afraid. Or 
Once you're invisible, bloody hard to turn back. Cheers. I'm so what are we dealing with? Unstoppable assassin. <laughs> gentlemen. And this compilation of crazy game modes is just the sort of bouncy cartoon fun that we've come to expect from Japan. Once you've sat through a rather amusing intro, you can choose between classic Bomberman, battle modes, puzzle games, and even a Bomberman RPG, which, unless you speak Japanese, can be a bit too challenging. There's kart games too, plenty of them. This not-so-serious approach to racing is littered with special pickups and colorful scenery. There are various bomber people to choose between too, and we're sure that you can unlock more of these cute and lovable South Park rejects as you progress through the game, along with more game modes and other wacky features. the adventure-themed Mega Man Legends, Mega Man X7 is an all-out platforming shoot-em-up that features not only 3D segments, but also traditional 2D side-scrolling stages too. You get three characters to choose from in X7, starting out with newcomer Axel, who comes equipped with shot and dash moves, the sword-wheeling Zero, and of course the mega-busting Mega Man himself. Each character also comes equipped with an auto-aim feature, which unfortunately has a mind of its own, often targeting the wrong enemies and completely hindering your attempts. But the double hero system works well enough, and players can form a team of two heroes, which adds a more strategic element to the overall play. Let's go! 
of you familiar with the genius of R-Type and its unforgiving level of 2D side-scrolling difficulty, you'll be pleased to hear that R-Type Final has now arrived after much delay. The traditional R-Type shooting system is back with a vengeance, along with new features that offer an entire history of playable ships, customizable features, game modes and difficulty settings for those that need it. As with previous games in the series, your first power-up equips your ship with a support craft that can be used in a variety of ways, and the unique crop of levels and boss characters will test the limits of your gaming prowess. Import buyers should snap this one up immediately. Jack and Daxter was platforming with a side order of adventuring, Ratchet and Clank is fighting with an extra portion of platforming. Ratchet is your guy, incidentally, while Clank is the metal sidekick, clinging to his back. We won't fail you, sir. We promise. Your objectives come in the form of missions as you travel new worlds in a quest to collect nuts and bolts and save a whole series of planets. It's a variation on a pretty ancient theme, but it works well and we like it. The missions are never anything taxing enough to ruin the pace, consisting mainly of finding things and taking them somewhere else. But it's the style and imagination in the enemy design that's so engaging. They're cute without being lame, and cartoony without being totally childish, especially as the game progresses and their attacks become more complex. The worlds are designed so that they feel more open than they really are, so although Ratchet & Clank is actually quite linear, it rarely seems that way. The stack of gadgets at your disposal adds more variety to the mix, letting you swing across certain voids, for instance, or have a go at simple yet engaging mini-game puzzles in order to hack electronic locks. Okay. 
You certainly can't fault the graphics either, which are insanely sumptuous. However, the respawn points are just too widely spaced. Failing to collect enough of the re-energizing blue orbs and taking too much damage can result in some lengthy bouts of step retracing. Ratchet & Clank is a beautiful looking, beautifully realized take on carefree platforming combat. Don't be put off by its kiddie looks, it's fun and that's what matters. second part of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, The Two Towers actually draws on the stories, locations and characters from the first two films, or books depending on how you look at it. The gameplay spans the story of the first two films and is based around some of the most awesome movie sequences ever created. Every detail imaginable has been crammed in to closely match Middle-earth's most dramatic set pieces. Quickly, Each of the three way. playable characters has specific weapons as portrayed in the films. Aragorn uses his sword and has his bow as a ranged weapon. For days we followed their trail. Legolas primarily uses his bow, but has elven fighting knives for melee combat. This forest is old. Very old. It's full of memory. And anger. Gimli uses his two-bladed dwarven axe, and also has throwing axes for ranged opportunities. <laughs> Like the films, the game is focused on a third-person action-adventure experience and features dramatic camera views of the action within fully 3D interactive environments taken straight from the big screen. The RPG-style system also allows you to develop each character by purchasing new moves, basic combo attacks and more complex killing sequences. And the system works well by encouraging players to be strategic with their selection of characters, weaponry and moves. You have to admire the technical feat achieved here. Dozens of characters on screen at once in some highly detailed environments. Unfortunately, the overall play does degenerate into mindless button bashing at times, with a wave of battling monsters followed by another, and another, and another. <laughs> But the inclusion of boss character levels works well in saving it from the brink of tedium. Quite simply, it's a quality hack and slash through and through. It's what we expected, and it's what the fans wanted. Sometimes, just sometimes, along comes a game that has it all. And Medal of Honor Frontline is indeed one of those games. But this is more than just a game. 
This pushes PS2 to the limits with beautiful visuals, awesome sounds and perfectly intuitive controls. start you're thrown into the heart of the action amongst the D-Day landings. The atmosphere is amazing with the sounds, visuals and sheer adrenaline pumping terror reaching fever pitch as you join in with hundreds of others storming the beaches among a hail of gunfire and artillery bombardment. There's no sense of being an indestructible hero here. The opportunities for an unsung death are evident all around you. Truly terrifying and truly exhilarating. The AI only adds to the sense of drama, with enemy soldiers diving for cover, searching out suspicious sounds and laying down suppressive fire. They'll use their dead allies as shields and rush to man unoccupied sentry guns. On the other hand, you can also catch them off guard or even suffering at the hands of some courageous local. But the AI also works for you. This is no solo run into the heart of enemy territory. Here you have a team of friends with you, shouting instructions, providing covering fire, and coming to your aid when things get really messy. You really feel part of a team. The scenery, sounds, and astounding attention to detail create an awesome atmosphere, filling you with a sense of despair and pointlessness, along with the exhilaration of making a difference. Add to that some extremely satisfying weapons and the panic-inducing inability to save anywhere and you have an experience second to none. No multiplayer options, but if that's what it takes to create a single player game as impressive as Medal of Honor Frontline, then we're prepared to let that one slide. Just let yourself get caught up in the emotionally charged, vibrantly chaotic experience of World War II, and thank God that you didn't actually have to be there for real. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and lest us all beseech the blessings of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking.
何様のつもりだまた車泥棒か違う潜入任務だここは都会じゃねえんだからよここはジャングルだヘビでも食らいな have realized various forms of energy. Civilizations have progressed with them. So where does such energy like Metatron lead our civilization? Position for landing. MR-1422, Dingo Egret, unlocked. 20 to touchdown. <laughs> That's unusual. What is? Indications of Metatron. It's way too shallow. The Metatron is not very deep. And it's very strong. It wasn't here last time I came. What the hell is that? An orbital frame. My limb is damaged. Damn Barum. Instructions? But in the last half year, the situation on Mars has changed drastically. Now, Balram's war potential is very strong. The Space Force put up a stubborn resistance, but without a major war, Mars was occupied by Balram in a flash. Our 
Almon is already getting ready. Only those two machines can make Almon move or stop. So you want this frame, don't you? Maybe. Even if you're far off, that's too rough. It sure is. Who's the commander? Is that you, Viola? to blow up at the core of Almon. In case of need, Ada will start up the explosion system automatically. It's programmed to do so. Ada, please answer my question. You're going to Almon, aren't you? So what if I am? Do you know Ada intends to self-destruct Jahuti on Almon? <laughs> Ada, please look after me. on this ship anyway. <laughs> if anything happens to my pals at Callisto, you'll pay. I didn't kill them. I don't believe you. I've been dead Come once on. already. Uh, I'll bring it to an end myself. No! <laughs> Look, the perfect fusion of Metatron! The destruction to end all! <laughs> The machine supplements your heart and lungs. That power comes from Jehudi. You will die if you leave Jehudi. The performance of these two bodies is even. But to match Anubis, Jehudi lacks one thing. A program to bring out the full performance of Jehudi. That depends on the skill of the runner. Get out of my way! Project Almond's purpose is not domination, destruction. He's here. It is Anubis. You must, even if I don't make it. Listen, please, be sure to stop Almon. Anubis! The universe and human subconscious are willing their own end! Look, this is the will.
Tale of Metatron. Do you realize how many of my comrades died back there? Dingo! You are one of the units for Project Alma. We're pals now, aren't we? Battle over. Anubis wins. You have come back under my command. You have done well.